Let's crank up the volume and learn how to podcast. Have a schedule, right? You want it to come out certain days, certain times. Uh, that way people can look forward to it just like a radio show. There are several different platforms for dissemination. All of them have different sort of focuses. Spotify is something that typically targets a younger demographic versus Apple Podcasts targeting a slightly older demographic. Go look at how those platforms display podcasts differently so you can get your naming conventions right. Because like Apple Podcasts, it'll show the whole title, but Spotify only shows like the first 60 characters. Platforms like Anchor for, for distributing everywhere. There are some settings in Anchor, though, that you're going to want to make sure and turn off. When you go publish a podcast, do it from the desktop, not from the app, because the app doesn't give you the ability to toggle this stuff off. There's like a opening ad that's played by Anchor, and it's just advertising Anchor. And then it also bookmarks your podcast at the end of it by another Anchor ad. You can actually turn off that ad. It doesn't do anything for you to have it on. It's not like you earn revenue from it. It's just basically how they marketed Anchor. There's a website called online-voice-recorder.com. That website allows you to plug your audio interface into your computer and then record from your microphone directly to a audio file that's saved straight to your computer. It's completely free. They've got some good editing stuff on there too that you can do with the audio before you save it. Then you can just upload it into Anchor. Recording on Anchor's platform is slightly less clear. So if clarity matters to you, I would say go that route. The problem with looking for an audience right up top is you don't have anything for them to grab onto, right? If a brand new show is starting on TV, they don't collect all of their fans on the first day. They collect most of their fans by episodes three or four when you can go back and watch some context and pull in some some value for yourself as to what this stuff is. Get four, five, six episodes under your belt and then start taking the best clips, the best 30 second, 60 second, two minute clips from those podcasts and use them in your other social media stuff to lure people in. So not clickbait, but voice bait. If you're recording a 30 minute long podcast, look for that 60 seconds in there where you're just absolutely crushing it, where you're like, hell yeah, that was the best sentence in the whole thing. And then take it and put it on other social media platforms. You can do it in several different ways. Anchor even has a speech to text translator for any videos that are under three minutes. So if you can clip out that audio and then go re-upload it to Anchor, you can literally get a speech-to-text visual of that exact same podcast. And then you're just going to seed it. So I'm sure if you've ever watched the videos online, you'll see there's usually like a thumbnail that's pretty intriguing and a title that's pretty intriguing. And you want to click on it. And all your brain's really doing is looking for when that thumbnail appears in the video, because that's what made you interested. So doing the same thing to your podcast would be helpful. So if you've got something in the first five minutes, the last five minutes, that's your power state. Going out and marketing that power statement, someone's going to come back into the podcast looking for more power statements like that. And where's the one that they heard in the context of the overall conversation. So it'll help people kind of go hunting for your good advice. When you're recording a podcast, you're in the midst of a content creation medium that can splinter in a lot of different directions. So when you're recording audio, if you're just recording audio and you wanna sit around in your old gym clothes and talk into a mic, great. If you wanna take a corner of your house though and set it up so it looks like a studio and get a nice table, get a nice mic arm, put all that stuff together so it looks like you're really doing a podcast and you can also videotape it, you can take that same content and two exit, right? Because now you have an audio recording you're using for podcast and a video recording you're using for social media and then the audio or the video can be translated into text for a blog so when you're in that blog creation mode don't be afraid to turn on two or three different cameras and point them at you in two or three different angles because that type of a, a thing right turn on your laptop camera turn on your web camera uh, set your cell phone up to record and face it towards you, right? Doing all of that stuff and just recording that core raw footage can be really helpful for just two, three, four Xing your content whenever it comes to building stuff out. You're putting on a performance. 
right? And you're talking to one person. People don't have listen parties for podcasts. So it's not like me and my 19 friends are going to get together and listen to you. So using words like y'all and and things like that, where you're talking to a group of people are less important than talking to one person at a time. The relationship between me and you, the audience member, is different than the relation between between all of you and me, the podcaster, because it makes it feel like you're talking past me as the listener and not directly to me. And you've got to put on that production. So you just got to put on a little bit of a performance or you'll lose people in just talking how you normally talk. People want to feel comfortable and that you're being authentic, but they also understand that the medium is a performance. So there's sort of a fine line you can strike between the two where your performance is appropriate. See that audio board will plug into your computer with the USB. And then you'll use the microphone to plug into that board. Do some test recordings and there's basically things on there like volume, frequency, different things like that that you'll adjust that will impact how your recording sounds. Because your recording volume, your recording ambient noise, all that stuff is what those things trigger and control. Mm -hmm. So that online voice recorder website will be great for doing that. You'll go in and you'll do a recording. And what I do whenever I set mine up is I'll just do one long recording. And in the mm -hmm. recording, I'll make a recording of what I'm doing with the set. So I'm turning this setting now to nine. I'm turning this setting to two. This is a test of what it sounds like with this setting. I'm turning it to 10. I'm turning this to three. This is what it sounds like with this setting. Listen to that recording the whole way through. You'll find exactly where it sounds good and then just match that on the overall product. And, and once it's set, just leave it there. Unless you're gonna move your recording environment, it's really not necessary to, to change that over and over again. There's licensed content out there all over the place that for around a hundred bucks, you could basically own a song that you can use commercially. I would definitely go just buy something like that. There's actually a masterclass that's given by Adam Carolla, and he's run the number one podcast in the country for like five or six years now. 